and welcome to our Schubertiad concert. Very luckily, Miss Beckley has been brought back off furlough as our head of singing and will be running the show this evening. So all I can say is welcome, Miss Beckley. to Schubertiade 2021. In normal times, the Schubertiade is our annual opportunity to meet together uh, with each other, with staff and the parents, and to share some of the more niche art songs and folk songs um, that we've been learning in our singing lessons, sometimes as part of the grade syllabuses. Uh, we offer wine, and we offer cheerful smiles to those who come in an attempt to dull their critical faculties and help them relax and enjoy our offerings. So, I hope everyone at home has got their glass of wine or whatever other repast they are going to enjoy. And without further delay, we will begin. So, um, the natural melodies and everyday human sagas contained in folk song offer a fertile supply of inspiration to composers of art song. And, they have been, and they've been given piano accompaniments by composers of both great and modest renown. We're going to begin with an American song which describes a large clock. And uh, this clock lived and died in exactly the same time, sp time span as the man who owned it. Uh, the song is called My Grandfather's Clock, it's quite well known. And it was so popular in America at the time that we've referred to such clo clocks as grandfather clocks ever since. So the song is actually given the name to the clock. Um, Penelope was to have sung this song, but we're very grateful to Mimi, Mimi, for stepping in at the very 11th hour to uh, sing it for us today. So that's first. And then, after that, we have an Irish folk song with a beautiful melody. The singer explains that love will outlast the fading of beauty and compares this to a sunflower worshipping the sun. The Sunflower is the name of the song, and it's going to be sung by Marisha. Then we have uh, She's Like the Swallow. That's a sad and beautiful tale from Canada, describing the life and demise of a fair maid. And that's going to be sung by Maggie. So that's our first set.
folk songs, um, as you know, sprung up without a figure, any kind of official accompaniment. And very often they were sung unaccompanied or with a very light, strum guitar or strummed piano um, or other keyboard instruments. And uh, so we're going to, the next song we're going to have is Scarborough Fair, very well known folk song, sung very, with very light accompaniment. And we, this is going to be sung by Romani. And then we're going to whisper Spain for a very popular 19th century song. This was composed by José Gómez and is written in a folk style. And um, it's sometimes sung as a cradle song and it's often used at Christmas uh, just in searching the word Jesus, Jesus, and it's a very popular Christmas carol. Um, and then we're going to have, it's called uh, A la Manita Nana, by the way. And then we're going to have um, a French song and in which a middle-aged woman gives advice to her younger friends, you know, how to uh, capture a man in the flower of youth. And that's going to be sung by Scarlett.
Franz and Robert Schumann were great friends, and they are inextricably linked in musical history. So I've paired them together in this recital. Uh, Brahms is first with a folk song arrangement, even the theme, and it's called Zontag, and a young chap longs for Sunday when he will see the girl he has his eye on. And this will be sung by Annie Lou. And then we have Der Nussbaum by Schumann. And this is the first song this evening where uh, the words are the work of a credited poet. Um, I'm not going to tell you who. But anyway, we're moving away from folk music now into art song. And in this song, a girl listens to rustling leaves of the nut tree and imagines they are whispering to her about her forthcoming marriage. Uh, Adriana will sing this.
a star, Adrian. Completely unfazed by the school bell. Um, now, we're going to move away from the theme of love, and we're going to now consider the plight of garden insects. So in Susan Hare's song, Out in the Garden, which Alicia, if I pronounce that right, will sing, we journey through the insect world of an English garden. Then we come to Clock a Clay. This is uh, an associated board uh, song, written especially for the associated board by Richard Rodney Bennett. And he describes the battle with the elements through the eyes of a ladybird. And so we will sing that one.
first we have Elgar's Ave Verum, which is a lovely communion anthem. And this will be sung by Louise. And then we'll have Fauré's song en prière, which is a humble prayer for faith and truth. And Alicia will sing this. Um, and as some, some of you know, Georgie, or Miss Entz, she's leaving us at the end of term. And she's going to embark, embark on her own teaching career. So I couldn't let her go without forcing her to sing with me. And uh, Lacme it is an opera by Delib that isn't performed very often, but um, it has a very famous duet. And I think you'll recognize it, and it might make you want to go on holiday. Um, they, are, they are actually Hindu priestesses in the, um, in the opera, so that's why I've included it in the section about the church. But anyway, first we have Elgar, and then Holly.
Okay, now uh, some more opera um, and the marriage of Figaro. The revolutionary playwright uh, Beaumarchais stipulated in the preface of his play, Le Mariage de Figaro, that the role of page boy Carabino should be played by a beautiful young woman. In setting the work as an opera, Mozart obeyed this instruction and the trouser role was born. In Roy K. Sapete, which Anna will sing, Cherubino is discovered to have written a song describing the confusing feelings of adolescent love, and to his great embarrassment is forced to sing it. Later we discover that Cherubino's amorous exploits have been un the undoing of the maid Barbarina, and she sings the lament, I have lost it, l'ho perduta, and this one will be sung by Alexa. Uh, to end our recital, Miss May and Miss Eds will sing the sublime at three duets. And this is from the same opera. The Countess, played by Miss May, dictates a letter to Susanna, played by Miss Eds. And that, you know, between us, this is not dissimilar to what takes place in the music department office. <laughs> Art reflex line. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed our evening. So we have our finale, finale from Marriage of Figaro. <laughs>